Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International One Pocket Open. Thank you. Thank you very much. The International One Pocket Open is a Pat Fleming production, and it's brought to you by AccuStats. We're so excited to been, have been able to do this for you this week. Uh, a brand new tradition we're starting here at the International, bringing 32 great one pocket players in to perform for you before we get underway with our other two main events starting tomorrow. Uh, we've had a great two days and we're down to the final match. They've so been playing a race to three all week. We're still with a race to three, one set for the championship. Now, as always, when we're here at the International, we're in the Simonis Aramith Arena and we're at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel. They've been our hosts for four years and we thank them very much for their gracious hospitality. We also want to say a big thank you to our table sponsor, Diamond Billiard Products, who's provided us with the best equipment in the business. Uh, before I introduce the players, just a quick reminder for tomorrow, we will be back with you at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and we will begin both our International Bigfoot 10-Ball Challenge and our International 9-Ball Open. So please join us tomorrow, and we've got six, seven more days of great action for you. Thank you all very much for supporting AccuStats and Professional Pool. Let's get right to the finals and introduce our two finalists. Representing the United States, sponsored by Game Tight Apparel, one of the strongest and most recognized one pocket players in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for T Rex, Tony Chohan. His opponent from the Republic of the Philippines. He's sponsored by Havoc Products and Bogies Billiards out of Houston, known as Superman. Please welcome Roberto Gomez. All right, gentlemen, please lag for the break if you would. Your official timekeeper is Mike Smith, and we are now going to send it upstairs to the booth. And we have a special guest to join the voice of Accus, that's Billy and Cardano. We've got Moscone Cup captain, Double J, Jeremy Jones. And your referee for this match is Ed Ladawi. Take it away upstairs, gentlemen. Well, Billy, it should be one heck of a match between Tony Shohan and Roberto Gomez here in our international one-pocket final. I'm Jeremy Jones with Billy and Cardona. Hey, Billy. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty pretty good match. Uh, uh, Roberto Gomez has been, really been playing well. You know, I watched him practice against Alice Pagaline. He run a 14, he run a 12. He's really striking the ball really, really well. Uh, he defeated quite a few really great players in this tournament. Now he's going to have to fight uh, uh, fight against another tremendous player in Tony Shohan. Tony Shohan's been rated the number one or number two player in the world for the last three or four or five years. I don't know. But uh, he, a tremendous player. Big stroke, very aggressive. Uh, he's playing extremely well. Yeah, I think, I mean, you would know better than I do, but from things I heard, a lot of people that saw them both kind of like Tony, the little bit of a modern-day Ronnie Allen in a sense uh, with his power shots and whatnot. I mean, probably a little more refined than Ronnie was. Uh, I think Tony played better than Ronnie Allen. Oh, wow, that's I amazing. Do. I do that. I, uh, I played Ronnie a lot, you know. I mean, this, this guy here, he banks better. He has, he has a more powerful stroke. Uh, he just... Well, to start off, uh, you see the 11 banking and going three rails with the cue ball behind the 9-3, maybe? 11 banking between the... I don't think the angle... The, if the it's 5 a, and the 13, no? Uh, with the top the, ball? Where, where's the cue ball? Oh, oh, right here. Cue ball's here. Yeah, bank the 11 between the 5 and 15 and go oh, three. Yeah, I mean, it's, could, it's kind yeah. of laying there. He could definitely kick there. Yeah. And that's what I like. I, if he doesn't like that, I like kind of kicking the cue ball behind the 1-3. If he has the 10 or the Sunday 11 between the uh, the 7 and the 15, looks like the angle that he's left with here is natural to go around. He doesn't want to go long, though. Yeah, and that's one thing that you'll see between, uh, or these guys will see between this table and the outer tables. This one definitely plays a little longer with the heat from the lights. Now he's looking at the long rail kick, which I like the four rail kick behind the one three a little better than the long railer. Yeah, I think you have a lot more margin for error with that. And uh, I think the results are going to be a lot better if he hit it well. 
Yeah, you keep a little more squeeze on uh, on uh, Tony, right? Looks like he, did he hit no, this he hard hit enough? It, not hard enough, but it was a great line with the cue ball, but now he's got to maybe fade Tony. Tony's got a few options. Now, the thing about it is, right, you can kind of float him behind the six, but then you're opening balls on his side, Roberto's side a little bit. Tony doesn't. Tony doesn't mind that a lot of times where some other players will stay away from that, huh, Billy? I kind of stay right, away from right. opening balls on my opponent's side. Is he going one cushion and then straight across the table, or is he going to, you know, he can possibly go two, three cushions with this shot as well. Yeah, he's he's trying to make it. I think. He's going straight across. All right, he's maybe flukes it in. Ooh, what a couple of nice kisses there. Didn't get the cue ball across as much as he wanted, but... Well, he got a cross table, you know, good enough. Yeah, he'll kick behind the one here, probably with quite a bit of speed. He's got the three to help him out as far as, you know, kind of containing the six ball. We'll see. And yeah, nice shot. Now, Roberto, who's been, you know, what I call kind of trending in the right direction. More than that, he's he won in South Carolina with one heck of a field ten ball. He finished second in, in two different Predator Series pro events here just a week ago in Ohio against Mario He, one really tough field. And he did the same thing in Battle Creek, uh, lost in the final against Aloysius Yap, uh, you know, probably oh, really? the hottest player on the planet. Uh, yeah, I watched you know. Yap play in the end. Man, what a player, huh? Oh, yeah. For such a young kid, really impressed me. Uh, he certainly didn't play his, like his age of 24 years of age. Yeah. He really impressed me a lot. And I'm surprised he got beat in the tournament. Yeah, he's... I thought uh, he was going to win the tournament. <clears throat> you're talking about the U.S. Open. Yeah, 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 yeah. match room. Yeah, he... Uh, is he drawing this one rail over below the four? Kind of knocking the one away like this? That's what I would have been afraid of, Billy. Don't know on the slick table, two rails that cut the one backwards into play. I, I like the shot, but... You know, if you're not for sure, maybe kick behind that ball, Billy. Yeah, that's what I would have done. All right. Doesn't look like Tony can get a ton, but he can certainly get four and maybe play from there. Ooh, he almost, almost tore the six off the rail there. <laughs> Friendly little double kiss. I'll tell you another thing that Tony, he doesn't get enough credit for is his nine ball game. You know, he's he's playing here in the nine ball this, this weekend, and he's been playing a lot more of the rotation tournaments. Uh, you know, he hasn't won one, of course, yet, but he's, I think he's starting to get more comfortable, and he's won a lot of big matches in the nine ball events. Really? Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good shot maker. I mean, he's not well. Yeah, he's a pretty good shot maker. I wouldn't say he's like one of the better ball strikers in the world, but he's a, he's he's a, he's a pretty good shot maker. Yeah, but you'd be surprised. Like it's almost like he, you know, when he's his mind is in it, he gets up for those big matches. And here in the last couple months, he's had a lot of wins uh, over some really top ranked players. What he does have is he has a powerful, powerful stroke. Oh yeah. Oh boy, he's able to handle that cue ball so effortlessly and. You know, and drawing it back and elevates so well. He does a lot of good things. He banks well. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of good. Uh... Well, that's one thing I see that if he, you know, had that interest in it, meaning if he really right. piqued interest in playing some rotation, he's still a very young man and healthy and probably playing just as good a pool as he's ever played, yeah, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so. All right, crossing this one over. That way he can play pocket speed. Doesn't want to have anything bad happen. Now sets up for a bank. He'll check the stack, most likely, just to kind of make sure he's not giving anything up with the stack, and then he'll take on the seven. Oh, you hit that one nice. And that's what I was about to say, that it seems like what I've watched today is there hasn't been any miss hits, or very many miss hits from Tony. 
Yeah. And he's got such good speed, too. Yeah. You know, for a big man, you would think that he wouldn't have the, the speed that he has, but his speed is really, really good. Now, I say it all the time. The big guys that are good players seem to have the sweetest strokes. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if it's that big arc that they have or what, but. No, you know, uh, Jace Watson from San Diego was a big man, too, and he played very similar to, to, to Tony. I mean, he right. had a powerful stroke, but yet he had a great finesse game as yeah, well. Barely touched and, yeah, the few balls. It, right. it was so beautiful to watch a big man as Dasher finesse a ball. Miserac, oh. I think, was the same. He's the most pure stroke I ever saw, oh, I think, Miserac. Yeah, he got through the ball so nicely. Best bridge I've ever seen, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a whole like, lot that he yeah. was down the line on Miserac, was there? No, he was... Uh, he, he was a beautiful player to watch play. Sure was. Yeah, he, uh, he was the epitome of a stroke. If you, yeah, if you ask me, he never thought he would miss a ball with his with his. Exactly. That ball. He got such great action with the cue ball with his stroke. You know, it just musician uh, almost with the pull cue. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a great player. Now, Tony, who I think Tony really what helped him today because, you know, to be honest, Tony sometimes. We'll talk about interest, you know, like if he's into it that day a little bit, you know. And today he started off and had a real tough, high, highly competitive match with Devin Poteet that went Hill Hill. So yeah. I think that kind of started his day off well, getting his attention. A pretty free two-reeler here. And just as Billy said that, now this one everyone's going to shoot. But Tony can shoot a lot of shots that other guys don't because his ball speed on the object ball is so good, like you said. Yeah, it is. He just rarely gives up a whole lot. Now, off a little bit there, but... Right, and that's unusual for him. But sure. I, you know, for, he usually puts the, uh, put the, puts the object ball very close to the pocket near a rail, near the short rail. I mean, uh, you know, he's so, so difficult to beat because he does so many things well. Now, what Roberto doesn't like is he doesn't really have anything on his side, nothing open underneath the stack. So even if he was to cross this over, not a lot of heat put on Tony, and it, it, he could miss hit it. So he might just knock this away. Oh, that's why I was saying he forced yeah. it, huh? I kind of like inside English with that shot. I, did too. I, don't know. Yeah. I didn't think he could get away with outside English. He, matter of fact, he didn't even come close yeah, to getting he hit away the with the underneath shot. side of it. So that means he was always kissing it yeah. with outside. Now, this is the part Tony has to be careful because you got the guy against the ropes at 5-0. to zero. Not saying that wasn't the right shot, but you do open him up to really kind of entice Roberto to maybe try and knock one in here. Yeah, I do agree with what you were saying, but I think what he did, it's hard to find fault in what he no, did. No, of course, yeah. And like you, know, if you, you know, That's one of the options for sure, and like Billy said, it's hard to find fault. Right. You know, but I do understand that whenever, if there's any weaknesses in Tony's game, it's playing the score. Yeah. That, that, that I totally agree with that. Yeah, and Tony might agree with it as well. He's a pretty honest guy <laughs> with himself. A, yeah, he's a gambler. He's a gambler. Yeah, but you if know? he doesn't have real good speed on that eight, say that eight comes over two or three more inches, four more inches now. Roberto may be able to slam dunk this two-reeler on the two. He may be able to play the long reel bank. All right. All right. Even there, I mean, if I was Roberto, of course, we're playing with a 60-second shot clock here, much different than the outer tables, even though it's rare when Tony takes more than 60 seconds. Yeah. Man, this sure looks cuttable to me. It certainly does, but maybe the ball count has something to do with it. Oh, he can see this crossover automatically here, so... He would love to go way up high with the cue ball here, not to leave a cross corner on the two, cross corner on the seven, none of that. So you got to be careful. He's, He's kick kicking? Kicking it now. Just making sure, making sure nothing really bad is going to happen. Now, these doubled up here, so, I mean, would you, I guess two round the 13 takes a lot of draw and power, maybe. Uh, hate to ha hate to send the balls up table, though, with a f down five to zero. Yeah, two round the 13 has got to hit that pretty pretty accurately uh, 
to get any decent results. And plus, he's got to draw the cue ball back. That's not going to be easy. He's just rolling forward. Nothing wrong with this. I mean, you're opening up some balls, but you've got to take a little bit of a chance anyways. Unless you want to try and send the balls up table and try and win from there with the score being 5-0. Probably not. You know, Tony's going to bring another ball down table. I don't know if this is right. And it doesn't look like it's got an avenue to go into the pocket either. I would move the 11 myself. Can, 11's yeah. the scary ball to me. Move the 11 across somewhere and just roll the ball over to the side rail maybe. Bank the 11 on top of the 12, just roll over by that side pocket or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. The 11's the dangerous ball, especially with the 12 8. Yeah, that's the exact shot that I, I thought he should shoot. I don't believe the 8 will go in Tony's pocket. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So he's got a little freedom here. Maybe he could bank the seven. I don't know if, we, if the cue ball, he can miss the uh, 14 with that. I don't think he can. No. If he wanted to draw between, but then that takes a lot of speed, so he's going to lose control there. Yeah. I'm trying to think. What about just, uh, well, I'd like to shake open the 9-5. What about banking the 9-5 and going two rails up, you know, up table to that end rail, not giving up a cut? You know, just let the five bank across. Where he was at with the cue ball. Okay. Just go up on the right side of the top top rail and let the five come. It's coming yeah. across. The yeah, I like coming that. Across, yeah, I like that know? as well. Actually, you're going to get a little throw on it. It's going to it's going to go downward come, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's going to come closer to the pocket. With those two balls, uh, kind of really hampering Tony, the eight and the thirteen or the eight and the twelve. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, I would have liked to have had the nine and five open there. Just a few more options, but. Now Tony's going to drop off the two here. Or is, ooh, he's knocking the nine away. Wow, he better have some control doing that. He's going to cross this to the side. He's dropping that bottom cushion. Nice and softly. Yeah. He's got good speed. It doesn't appear he can do anything with the bank on the combo. Yeah. Shots of this type really don't work out well often. Because uh, he's got to control the, uh, he's the top to ball. Bank, so. Yeah, he's trying to bank the fort. No, he's shooting those. Yeah, I was about to say, he feels like he can kind of twist it in. I'll tell you what, he almost did. Now Tony's just got to knock the 14 away. Really protecting the cue ball here. Don't give up the nine. <laughs> Got to maybe shove it forward a little bit here. Just like that. Nice cue ball. <laughs> now, of course, Berto's trying to win this game, but... These kind of games, you know, if a shot presents itself, a long rail bank that he's a favorite to make, say he can cue it real well or something like that, he's probably supposed to shoot it. But in these situations early in the set, even though it's only a race to three, I kind of like to try and, like, lengthen this game, get myself more comfortable a little bit. Maybe, uh, you know, of course, trying to win the game, but just... just I'm not calling it a loss, but I definitely want to do a little something with this game besides just lose it. I want to get a lot of time at the table. Get it all loose. Yeah. That was a very risky shot there. Look how good he hit it holding the cue ball. What a shot. I don't know. Maybe uh, are you saying that he can't see the side of the 13 ball, the back across corner? He may be able to, but still pretty impressive going into the 11 knowing he's holding it behind the 8. I mean, he needs Tony to go for one of these realistically. I mean, if Tony knocks his 13 away, hard press for Roberto to win this game. Well, nothing goes in Roberto's pocket except the 10-14. Uh, the yeah, he can't really. To get it across, I think he loses the cue ball a little bit as far as the speed. Yeah, that's the shot in my mind right there. 
now, unless Tony really wants to help him out, I think uh, that shot right there is going to make it super tough for Roberto to win the game. I mean, look how the balls are configured there in the first yeah. part. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's so ugly. Nothing goes in Roberto's pocket. I think the 13 may, but you got you to get pretty accurate on the on the line on it to get it to get it to go. But uh, well, the thing uh, is, if Roberto doesn't have something to bring the ball down, he's moving him up, and that's uh, the problem for Roberto. You banking this going into the 10? Trying to hold the rock by the I know, 12? Well, well, he don't have any future with the shot. I know. Got him. I think he got him on the corner there. I don't think he. No, he can see the thirteen. He but, oh, yeah, yeah, can, yeah, but I don't. I think he just. I'll tell you what. Pretty good shot right there, really, for the score. Pretty easy shot. Pretty. I think pretty effective. Can't easily come off the ten. He's going to shoot the twelve. Just come to the in rail. You would figure. Nothing more. Uh, Tony's pretty comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, he had a pretty full ball there. He uh, was comfortable hitting it like he did, knowing that he was going to get a good cue ball with the type of hit that he needed. I wouldn't hit the five here. I'd go into the nine, yeah, like that. Yeah. No reason to open up those balls if they're laying pretty good. Yeah, we have the one pocket here, and you can't see the rest of the arena, though, but all these nine ball players warming up for the start of tomorrow's main event. Greats from all over the world. Pretty impressive what Pat Fleming does here every year, Billy. Yeah. This is the first time I've been at this event. How many years has he had it now? Like four? Four, I believe, yeah. Tony underneath the balls, which is exactly where he wants to be with the score, how it is. The side straight in, and how you want it. I kind of like him coming off the five. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I would go into the five, but of course he... I might, just stop. I might not come back on this one. He did pretty good. Well, he's got, he has got six balls. Yeah, six yeah. to zero. And maybe. Now, if he would have had four or five, I don't think he would have shot that shot. Pretty nice there. He's got to roll very delicately on the nine, maybe. Yeah, that's all, that's all he can do from here. Watch out. You know, get the top side of it a little bit. Not too much worries coming off the 14 down to the bottom rail. It's going to be a little light, I think. Oh, uh, that was going to be a problem with that shot. But as much as he had to elevate, that really creates a problem, compromises the speed of the shot. Negative two, go uh, roll on the 14, just bumping the five. Don't overthink it. I want to make it though up in the corner. You should just come off the five and come down table. Absolutely. You know, he's not even looking at it that way. I'm sure he will. At some point. Uh, yeah, he didn't. The two's not a bad ball for him. I wouldn't want to have to come off no, the two. No. You could cut the 13 and come straight down the table. That's not terrible. But I like your shot opening the five a little bit. Yeah, he had much five. better speed and everything with that yeah. shot. Well, he's looked like he's really queuing on this. Uh, yeah, that's just trying to get one. That's really not. Hit it well, but that's you know that's not really the pattern he wants to look at. 
I think this may go cross corner. It's, it looks pretty close. I don't know if it's as advisable to shoot it, you know, because. Uh, I think top inside, he's okay. Uh, well, it might be may. might scratch with it though. Nah, I don't think so. He didn't even shoot it. I don't blame him. He's leading six to nothing. He don't need that. Yeah, he's just got to roll on this softly here. I guess you can come back. Got to watch out. He may open up and give up a free bank if he didn't get the cue ball well. Pretty nice. Yeah, got good results with it. He just lay on the five here. Can just the five and the seven. Nice soft speed. There you go. It's getting to look uglier than it's supposed to, for Roberto. And you always hear it, how they say it. Tony needs to, and Roberto owes to. I th yeah, yeah. I tell you, he's trying to create something, though. He's he he shot the seven. He's trying to create a, a <laughs> loss. <laughs> well, imagine where that cue ball started to end up behind the seven like that. Pretty like hard to do. Straight into. Roberto seems to be very aggressive. He's going for his pocket on borderline situations. And not only is he doing that, but he can only get like one ball. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, now, Roberto's been playing one pocket for a while, but one of the hardest situations, or not hardest situation, but takes a little time to learn is when you're behind and how to, how to get the balls back in play to where you got a chance. And not only that, you got to be a little disciplined because it's easy to think, feel like, unless you know better, to shoot at some of these because uh, you're so far behind. But a lot of times you got to get balls kind of coming down to the spot. Yeah. Sometimes when you shoot a shot that you really shouldn't shoot, you only can get one ball, you're losing an opportunity to, to maybe position a ball to where you can get them on the foot spot, maybe get a couple of balls on the foot spot. Because once balls start to accumulate on the foot spot, they're somewhat, diff they're somewhat difficult to remove. Absolutely. You know? And uh by well designed somehow where they where the spots at, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, it's no accident it seems like. When you start you know, you know, accumulating balls on the foot spot and controlling the cue ball to where you can't get the balls off the foot spot, you get another one on the foot spot, then uh, you can get back in the back in the game but you're really looking at a deficit. Well, you know, Good players, when they give up a big spot at the pool room against uh, lot, you know weaker players, you talk about lengthening the game, it might promote a mistake, a miscue, a foul of some sort. Well, it kind of rings true with the even with the top players a little bit. Not saying it happens as often, but you can you can sometimes somehow you know you keep laying them on the rail like you said, very difficult to remove balls and, and whatnot. You can sometimes get your, the you know even the top players to uh -huh. to to miss, you know, cue bat poorly some kind of way and give up a ball. All right, he's definitely going to bank at something here. I think, anyways, even though he cut him off the eight. But I think he's sitting nice to follow on the two and maybe get a cut on the 12. Hey, look at here. What's wrong with shooting the 10 off the nine and just following right down, Put the make the 10, put that on the foot spot? Yeah, this ain't bad, though. This one lays good. I mean, it laid really nice. I thought he could follow down and maybe get on the 12. Well, he kind of did almost. Two railer on the 12, maybe. No, he's, he owes one, or he owes two, rather. So, <laughs> ball's coming on the yeah. spot. Yeah, either one or two is the same difference when you, you put a ball up on the foot spot. Is he cutting the five? What's he doing? I'm not sure what he's doing. I guess he's cutting the five. Oh, what a sweet hit that was. Friction. Oh, now he's got an 11 ball Does bank. Does he have maybe. it? Maybe. Uh, maybe. It's close. So and this is kind of what I was talking about, you know, 
Roberto getting to shoot some shots, you know, that in the first game. At least get something out of this first game. You're trying to still win it, of course, but. That's a nice struck ball there. Yeah, now he's got the 10. He can maybe get behind the 9 or at least bank the 10 out of his pocket. Yeah. Guess he can't cut the ten and up, Billy? I think so. I think he can. He overcut it. We well, put the cue ball in a nice place right in the center of the in rail. The two coming on the spot. Uh, Tony may kick softly behind this. It's a little up to kind of kick firm, maybe. I don't know. It's close. Is he really thinking about banking the twelve here? I think he's banking the nine, yeah. The Is nine? it the 9 or the 12? 12, 12, yeah. 12, okay. Yeah. Well, he needs to have that good speed on the object ball like we were talking about. Yes, sir. Going to go a little bit long. That's pretty good. Especially where you, when you consider the position of the, tw of the 10 ball, you're going to have to defend against the 10 and also the... 13 that they just banked. Yeah, and it's sitting pretty close to that same double kiss he got earlier in yeah. the game. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. He's like parallel in right. caddy corner to that ball. Even a hair inside of it, so that yeah. makes it even tougher. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very difficult to uh I think he may entertain him fanning this 10 in. Yeah, I mean, well, so being so far behind in the game, it, I mean, it it's a very shootable shot for yeah, these guys. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad option at all because of the difficulty of getting away with kicking that 13 out of there or getting it out of there in some fashion it's going to be difficult to, so therefore I believe that the difficulty in removing the 13 is probably on the same level as pocketing the 10 yeah so if that's the case then I like your shot pocketing the 10 yeah the more I look at the 13 it looks uh, very very hard to beat the kiss you almost have to, like, uh, masse heavily into the ball, and then, you know, from nine feet away, you're going to lose uh, control. Oh, oh, come on. That's that like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like a slightly <laughs> elevated masse, like a, <laughs> level, you know, natural yeah, yeah. masse or whatever the word is they call it. But What do you think about that match here there on the West Coast with Scott Frost and Chip Compton? I don't know what the score is. Uh, they're racing to 40. Right now, the score is 30. 30. Let me see. A 35 and 32. Yeah, when uh, they were Frost. starting. They were starting at that score today, right? I don't know. I th yeah, they were had they? a long session yesterday, so they s decided to extend it into today. Uh, I think it was 35 32 going into today. But they. It, I think going to 40, yeah. I thought uh, I thought it was a real close match. Whoever p kind of played their game, the, the closest to their game was going to win. But I thought it was going to be real close, too, but I, I gave a slight edge to Frost because I, he's been playing pretty good lately, Yeah. and they're playing on his home, to, home table. So yeah. That's why I gave a slight edge to him. Well, Chips had, you know, been in action a little more in the one pocket, you might say, but I... I think people don't understand how good Scott plays at times. I think they forget that, you know, barring Tony, he, he may be best American one-pocket player. Now, yeah, there's a lot close. of guys coming up there. Now, Justin Hall's a great player. I like his game. I think he's up there. Yeah, I uh, do, too. Yeah, here he is cutting the 10. I think this is the right shot for Roberto. Maybe he opens the balls on the spot. Maybe gets a bank. Oh, he hit it thick, so he's going to need some help. And he's not going to get it. No, he's not. Mm 
Well, I just got a report. It's 36 to 35 right now in favor of Scott in that match. But in fact, our main match here in the finals of the one pocket division here at the International, Tony Shohan takes game one. If it's that close, you see, Scott quit prematurely yesterday. And, and, and that wasn't the... That wasn't the uh, he, what, he quit what? Maturely? Prematurely. Prematurely. Prematurely, yeah. Because they were supposed to play to a certain uh, hour. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he neglected to do that. So he said, let's quit now. Chip said, no, I want to keep playing. Because it was, he was right by wanting to keep, keep weak playing because Scott was getting weaker. Right. And they had a contract. Yeah. And so for some reason, or somehow Scott convinced him to flip a coin on it. Wow. So they flipped a coin and Scott won. So they quit yesterday. And now they, they you know, they started playing again today. Now you're saying it's 36-35? Yeah. I don't think Scott's going to beat him. Wow. You know what I mean? Because uh, he's shown a little weakness by, you know, right, oh, right. Oh, you know by, I want to quit. Looks like he's kicking at the stack here. What's he really kicking at, though? Oh, wow. What a stick on that ball that was. That was super nice. Put one on the low rail, on the side rail, above the side. So, of course, not the break that Roberto wanted, but definitely not the return he was wanting either. Man, touchy little situation quickly yeah. here in game number two. Yeah. Especially because just look at who broke the balls, but who has available shots after two shots. Uh, Tony's got a lot of them working on his side of, side of the table. Can't see what's available. Was he taking a scratch here? Yeah, I don't think he's trying to do much. I think he actually made contact on the ball. He did? I think he did. I think he rubbed the, the ball he was stuck to. Well, that was an excellent shot. That's what he did. Well, Tony can remove the five and come right back on that two ball if he wants with the cue ball. Pretty simple. He's looking elsewhere just because the double up. Now, he could. He's trying to make the three. Nothing wrong with that. He has nice. so much freedom with the cue ball. Good speed once again. Keeping the pressure on him. Yeah, this is what I was kind of viewing, but it looks like the seven's got that slowed down a little bit, the shot on the nine. Ooh, he's opening the stack. Is he going to drop on the, the three? three? Wow, this is dangerous. Good. Better hit it well. Better not give it up. He, pretty good that the nine got there, right? Okay, he's got a natural shot to come off the three here and go back up table. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with the nine. I was, I'm was. i thinking more like Billy is. The nine's not really hurting you too bad from up the table. And he's got to worry about a big pocket cut on the two because Roberto certainly will shoot that. He might, he, he might find himself behind the three again if he shoots is the he nine. Is he giving him this ball and putting him on the seven? Got the cue ball close to a cushion. That's a good thing. Yeah, a nice little double kiss there. Yeah. And the reason that's so important is Roberto, you know, can't, you know, anytime you leave him on the cushion, they just very rarely can shoot with speed. They always are rolling the ball. So. Can't hit below the center either. Yeah, so if these. He, if he needs to, it's not available. Yeah, these balls aren't. Uh, yeah, it's not so much they won't get safe from here, but he can't turn anything around. So Tony's still going to get a few innings of a, a what 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 is kind of managing, free shots, right? Managing, yeah. yes. He needs to get a ball across, really, but he's not going to be able to do it. May have to fade a 15 ball that certainly twists yeah, back he can here. Twist it. <laughs> and with Tony's super stroke, I, I'm sure this ball is going to turn pretty nicely. Well, he's got a really good touch with it as well. So watch, a lot of people overhit the turn shot. Tony will hit it a hair wider and use that good stroke like this. Watch. See? It's amazing with the speed and everything that he, he really <laughs> delivers those shots, right? Amazing. He's such a good player. Come on. I mean, <laughs> those, those shots aren't that easy to put down, especially with the speed that he hit it with. Well, I tell you, I brought it up earlier. I think it's really boding well for his game as he's playing a lot more nine ball matches, Billy. I mean, I think he's, his strike in the ball has gotten better even. Now, there he got, got away from him a little bit. Can he come up and bump the 14? That'd be the, yeah, the 10. 
Oh. I didn't get there. Oh. 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 What do you do? Kick at the 11 here or something? Uh, does the 14 not bank? Can he not bank the 14? Oh, I, I don't know. That's, uh, I mean, he's still got a pretty free one here. I don't. This doesn't look like he, he can bank it. No? No, it doesn't look like it. I don't think he can get shape is the problem. I think if he could get by the 13 with the cue ball while banking the 14. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, maybe he can because that's a... It's close. Yeah, yeah he's it's close. It's pretty flat. Yeah. You know, he's going to go into the 13 then. Yeah, but he can bank the 6 and leave him long and straight on the 2 and challenge him maybe uh, and not worry about a whole lot, right? I mean, if you leave him on the rail... Man, I hate to open these balls up on his side here. Nine back into the two. Two back into the seven. Going up table with the cue ball like that. Yeah, that's... I know it looked a little crazy maybe, but... No, it didn't. It no. didn't because he's at the table. He knows the angle. He can see the angle. He can feel it. So that it didn't look crazy at all. Look at the results. So that speaks for itself. Right. But that's what I would have done. I would have done everything I could to not... To keep this situation to where Roberto's got nothing uh, open I and agree, I can be I aggressive. So. I just didn't think he had anything available, but evidently he had multiple things. Yeah, Roberto better really just bang the seven into these balls here and start to really reposition. Now he's looking at cutting the, third, the nine ball. He's cutting the nine ball. Wow. Oh. That's so risky. Looks like... It. If, if he cuts the 9, goes into the 13, he's going to go into the 14. He may get away with it. Well, I'll tell you what he thinks is the 8-1 is really protecting him from not selling out a straight-in shot. I think that's the only thing he can imagine here. See that? Yeah. What a shot. Yeah. Really kind of unlucky. Can he shoot the 13 and get by the 4-11, break the 4-11 up, get on the 2 somehow? But that was pretty crafty there because he understood the interaction that would be what was going to be taking place on that shot, and it, and it, and it actually played out exactly the way he, the way he envisioned it. Well, you know how it is, Billy. When you hit the ball of the hole, it usually works out how you envision. The problem <laughs> is when you don't yeah, hit it to the yeah, hole. That's how, yeah. much, how much room do you have, yeah, you know, for so making true. a mistake so there? Yeah, 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 that's so true. I'm not sure what he was trying to get on. Maybe the two ball bank. Uh, well, he's got nothing now, so. But, uh, you know, I have to applaud him there because he really got the maximum from the position that he was in. Yeah, and I'll tell you, with the 8-1 the way it is, he would certainly, you know, surely like to have an offensive shot that he could get behind them balls, but looks like he may have to hit this hard to have any chance. Oh, he stiffed it nice. Wow. Oh, nice shot. Now he's going to drop behind them balls. You believe that uh, he's going to... He's going to get out from much, here. Do this much no. damage from where he was? He's going to get out, maybe. He's got three. He's going to get three or four more here if he stays off the rail with the cue ball. I think it all goes back to where I said he's got to kick at that 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, well, no, he should have just done a little better with the cue ball there. <laughs> yes, he should have. He's a little more towards the side rail. <laughs> Roberto can't cue the ball in the nine, but Tony can't really do anything but, you know, kind of salute this run of balls here by Roberto. Wow, the six goes too. He can go up for the six. He can get all the way out here. Quite an impressive display of uh, cumanship. Look thick. Okay. That's a little difference in the, you know, the heat here on that table. Uh, I guess he's playing for two. Yeah. He got a little straight. I thought he might go to the six right then just because he's so good. You know what I mean? I don't go to the six, but these guys are so good with the, you know, pocketing the ball that I thought he had an angle on the one right there to maybe go to the six. Well, you know what? He didn't have to get straight awkward. Like no, he obviously, did, obviously. Know? But you could see he was trying to ease it. You know, on the outer table, I think that one ball hangs up. But Roberto knows here on the main table he can he can cheat the pocket a little bit. Now he's just going to open these to make sure he keeps some heat on Tony. 
doesn't want to bank the six and Tony, you know, have some kind of free shot. Wow, great shooting, Roberto. Oh, wow. He <laughs> certainly got uh, much more than he was entitled to there. Would you rub this and lay behind the four here? I don't think the kick goes. I think it does. Uh, I didn't well, think he could get behind it enough myself. It's hard. When you're close, that ball's close like that. It almost yeah. appears it is. But he, he couldn't have spun it a little bit more there? Yeah, I don't think so. Now, this one here is a lot of pressure. That's what I was going to say. You may have to hit it firm to make it tighten up. Well, you got to go here. Play shape for the 10. He can get some balls here if he plays great. He's not rubbing the four going by, is he? Uh, they're going to be close. I don't think so. Man, he touched it just a little bit. I don't know if he can get it out or not. Going to let it fly. To scratch. Hopes to contact the six. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What a he had to let wow. the cue ball go a little bit. Uh, yeah. Ed Ladawa, our referee here in the final match. Still a race to three. Yes, it is. What do you do here? You need them all. You ever take a chance at crossing the five and going into the four with the cue ball here, Billy? Is it too, a little too risky? Yeah, well, the six banks, though. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You only need one. Yeah, I get it. And balls are out of play, so you don't really want to give them too many of those pops, even yeah, though they're not ones, free, yeah. but they're still legitimate. He's going to probably try to bank this one. He's going to go into the 10, and crazy stuff could possibly happen here. I was kind of shocked that Tony hit that kick on the five that hard. He had a bankable four ball right there as well. He could have left him uh, kind of froze right there on the end rail and put a lot of, probably hit the bank real accurately. Might kick the four over right here. Kind of slide down with the cue ball. I don't want to give up a two-reeler. I guess, oh, he's cross-cornering this. I didn't realize this was bankable. Going into the four with the cue yeah, ball. Yeah, but he could go into the rail. And he he could go into the scratch, yeah. Wow. He just overcut it a touch. You know, the thing is, is that it was very difficult to envision that ball scratching like it did because you, the four blocked almost, almost the entire pocket. Oh, Roberto. High ball's fine here. He doesn't want to hit the out, outside of the six with it. Yeah, once he readjusted the cue ball, I think uh, that became very pretty hard to do unless he hit it really, really hard. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, he got it. You got to give the man credit. He did exactly what he wanted to do in that particular game and uh, walked away with it. Uh, you know, we came back from a, from a deficit and a bad situation. Yeah, he broke the balls there in game number two and was down three to zero. You know, when he broke, he got those two that tied up. Only another ball came off the rack, and Tony really kind of repositioned everything, made a few good shots. Tony had the best position and a three-ball lead. And uh, the best shot, though, was the nine-ball cut shot oh, there by Roberto. Oh, that's right. And for him to be able to depict or even to notice that was available is uh, something in itself. That was a pretty good... Kind of pretty, amazing, though. When pretty you good eye with that one. When you let the guys cue the ball, that they just figure out a way to do some damage, huh? Yeah. That took a lot of, like, drag right English mm -hmm. on the nine and... Okay, nice. and that's why they're champions. Now, 
Tony's got to regroup a little bit. Didn't really do a whole lot wrong to lose that game, I would say. He sure didn't. All right, you know, could, you have to give uh, all the credit to uh, Roberto there. Two railing this and drawing up the rail, it looks like. Yeah, I like that. I love that shot. I love that shot. <laughs> the key to that yeah. shot is to be able to hit it smooth like he does. A lot, you know, a lot of people, including myself, let it go off in my hand a little bit, you know, and Tony always has that nice touch, right? He does. He does. All right. Looks like this goes to me. Maybe half pocket. All right. Playing the speed. You know, well, I'll tell you what. It's better that it didn't go. Now he's really got his hands full trying to get out of this. Got that four rail kick again. Basically three rails catching the fourth rail right before yeah. the pink. Yeah. I think he's going to have to shoot it this time. Yeah, and the problem is the nine ball staring him straight back in the face. Well, but you, I mean, you got to deal with that. Do. That's yeah, all. That's just I mean, part come of it. on. Yeah. I mean, you know, if that's going to deter you, uh, then you got to get another job. <laughs> yeah, go back to nine ball. Right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, watch out. The table plays a little long with the lights. No, he's going the same way he went the first time. Well, which you, which you know. both of us disagreed with it. I kind of yeah. like the other. I kind of like the, the four rail kick once again. Because here, this is really, he's got to hit this perfectly, not yeah. only in, not so only not in direction, scratch, but right? in speed as well. And not scratch, I think. I think there's a lot of scratches there also. See? Yeah. See, that, that was just asking too much because he really didn't have a good channel to get through to where he needed to go. Yeah, not near as much room for error, no, basically, is not what at Billy's all. saying. I think there was a gap, but, like, not much. Not much at all. Yeah, now get above for the nine. Of course, he's got a... I think it's the 13 that goes as well. Now he can come into the th the 12 three with the cue ball. A little I think bit. he's got to open him up now. Uh, yeah, he's he's in good line. To open him up now and just draw the ball. Yeah, I would draw the ball back. Yeah, it looks like he might go into the 13. I would shoot the nine. I think and go subtly into that 13. I think. Yeah, or the 12. I mean. You think yeah. so? Yeah, I think so, unless he's playing real safe behind the stack. But a little inside here going in the 13-3, real light, like that. The 8 oh. goes and the 13 goes. So, Well, I'm certainly not going to argue with you, especially if he... Uh, well, I mean, get a real big know. lead instead of taking a chance. You know, he's getting an extra two or three balls here, maybe even more with this yeah. combo. Yeah. Now he's jacked up, so making this ball is huge. You get to move another one to your pocket. Does the five go? I don't think it does. Um, it must. It must go. Because shooting the 13 isn't really great. No, you can't shoot the 2-12 two, two combo. No, no way. that's not going to happen. I think he's going to shoot the five. Good thing for him is there's no real banks on the top side of the stack. Now the kick bank, probably the shot. Shot you really got to have in your arsenal if you're going to be a one-pocket player. Right. What do you play, like a mirror system with this shot or do what? Uh, I mean, I give, I go over and look, of course. Oh, my, look at that. He's lucky not to scratch what there. What the heck did he do there? I don't know. He caught a couple points on the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> off. But I he mean, shot it like it was no big I, deal. I mean, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I go over and look, and, you know, there's different Englishes depending on what how you want the speed of the cue ball to be. So generally it's a running English up to the end rail. You just get, you know, go look, and you get a real good feel for it. I'm not much of a system guy. I just kind of like, okay, you know, I know some systems, or but I kind of use them as a reference a little bit. Not so much guaranteed. No, it's not Bible then, the system. You, you, yeah. You'll play somewhat of a system if it... If it, uh, if, matches I feel up, if it matches up to your feel. Right, right. Like the three-rail kick we were talking about, I probably use that system more than any other system. It seems the most true to me. Like if I, my speed's a little off, it still works. Now, I wouldn't want to let him see the five ball if I, if, you know, myself. 
think Roberto will go upstairs for sure with the cue ball here. But and he wants that below the rack. Yeah, exactly. You don't want it where Tony can easily defend on it. As Billy yeah, said earlier. He's got, him in, he's got him in a little bit of a spot. Got a ticky the two, huh? He's got him in a little bit of a spot here. He's yeah. going to shoot the six into... Oh, he's rolling this ball. He's going to hit it thickly. That's what he's going to do. Yeesh. And very thickly he's going to hit. He's not going to go for the pocket. He's going to just try to get it to that bottom cushion and slide off that 13 softly. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to rearrange a whole lot. Tell you that. Looks like to me he's selling out a bank. Maybe even a straight uh, in. He's going to hit a pretty, it ain't in the face he's going to hit it. How good is that? Well, we, there's a few more tournaments, of course, after this international in the coming weeks. But international really kind of rounds up about two two months or so of uh, a lot of really big events here in the U.S. There, Billy, a lot of Euros been here two two and a half months. Oh, really? Yeah. Dated back to the Texas State Open, and then they went all to Vegas for two weeks for those events, then on to the U.S. Open Atlantic City, then South Carolina after that. A couple so of the new pro down. players. It's going to slow down after this event? Yeah, yeah. A few pro players of uh, tournaments brought to you by CSI. Here we go. This guy made two, two finals in a row, Roberto. He's playing a Bayard combination. And he makes it, and he gets a, maybe a little bank on the six. Interesting. See that a lot. Right-hander using the bridge left-handed. I didn't notice yeah. that. I didn't know. This is a very difficult shot to shoot all out and shoot it. He really doesn't have the uh, the type of an angle that's advisable to shoot this shot with. I'll tell you what, though. He can go three rails and break the rack. That's what I might look at. Oh, he's going long here. He's going long with a high ball? Oh, he's going long. With a high ball? Yeah. No, on, t on purpose, I mean. With the new felt, he may, like Billy said, come two rails long on the side with the cue ball. Especially if he just uses a straight high ball. If he hits right, he may, he may catch the third rail and into the 11 with the cue ball. He came long. Watch out. Three ball. Oh, and that's probably going to end game number three and get Tony on the heel quickly here. Yeah. Tony needs, well, he needs one ball. Yeah. Well, during that trick shot with the bridge, Roberto yeah. pocketed a ball for Tony as well. Yeah, so I really couldn't argue or can't argue with, with what he tried to do because of the score. You know, it just had to, but it just had the remaining balls weren't really positioned well for him to do a lot of damage. Well, for your one pocket fans, we got another update: thirty-seven, thirty-six. Chip going his first lead in three like days. Like I said, right? I think Chip's going to win that match. First lead in three days because of how first it lead came in three down. days, something like that. He was up five to one in day one, and I think that's the last time he had the lead. And they are going to forty, by the way. Yeah. When Scott wanted to quit prematurely yesterday, that was a bad sign for yeah. him. You know, he's kind of supposed to take it up because they really didn't play that long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So therefore, he just felt the heat. He wanted to get away from it. I heard there were a couple long games that really wore on Scott is what it was. There were a couple. They didn't play that long overall, but there were a couple games that lasted really long. Yeah, and he probably lost them. Exactly, knock yeah. the wind out of them. Up yeah, so when you when you lose a real long game, it's, it's just more, it's just more taxing. On Absolutely. You. You oh know? my, he didn't hit. Because you I probably did so shot. much in in that game, you know, f for you to possibly win it, but yet when it was all said and done, you lose it. Yeah. And oh man, what the heck? I can't go through this again. <laughs> I want. I don't want to do this again. That's yeah, he probably wants to stay away from those games. Even though I thought I've always thought Scott was pre pretty darn good with the games uh, were up when the balls were up table. Of course, Chip in the last several matches he's played, he's shown what 
he can do when the balls get all up table. Yeah. I, I really good. like Chip's game a lot. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. And evidently, uh, he does, too, and somebody else as well. Well, you know, I personally think Chip's game's been there in the one pocket for a while. It's just a I matter of him dedicating yeah. himself and uh, really putting in the time to try and beat these guys. And, uh, you know, he's from Oklahoma, right, where the game originated, right? Yeah. yeah. Kind of got it in his blood. Now, Roberto up in the air with the cue stick, trying to get to the stack, I think. Watch out. That's going to come high. May yeah. leave a gap. Yes, he did. And and the thing about that is, you ain't you don't have much by your hole, right? So what are you really protecting to take the chance there? I think just lay him on the rail behind the stack. I think is a little better there, right? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And now ball's very ugly for Roberto again, even though he's got a few on his. You side. like this kick bank on the on the ten here? Not terrible. You know what I mean? Not terrible. I mean, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with the shot. You got a lot of margin for error. I think he just could bank it one rail and go the end rail. I think going up table with the cue ball is less dangerous than leaving him close. Uh, you may leave a cross corner if your speed isn't right on the on the kick bank, right? Yeah. And it doesn't kiss with the five and the six being tied up. He can certainly one rail the the ten ball with high right and, and be pretty safe doing it. This is the shot though all day. If he lays this over the pocket. Yeah. I didn't think that he even had uh, the ability to do that to bank it. I thought the six was frozen to where he couldn't hit that rail with it. Or where, you know, where he did. Yeah. Now, Roberto, if he could cue the low left side of this ball, you may see him bank the 11 and draw behind the six. But I think the four's got him cut off on hitting the, the left yeah. side of the cue Yeah, I, see, I do too. Maybe just straight draw gets him there. Billy, it's close. I mean, yeah. but the thing is, I'm not so sure the bank goes with straight draw. He's going the end rail. Yeah, he's going up table. Uh, that's good speed on the object ball, it looks like. He needs that to go, as Richard did. He did great with the cue ball. Yeah. Didn't do too badly with the object ball either. No. What's the 12 look like? The four balls lined up towards the six. It's like it's a little yeah. high on He's the got six. Tony in some trouble here, by the way. Tony would like to spin into the stack. Can he go into the stack? He yeah. would like oh, to spin into well, the stack. He's got the best of it then. If but, he doesn't overhit this. But it's a long way down. Nah, that this English is an easy shot. This is an easy shot. Okay. He, was he had way the best of it there. Yeah. You notice how he didn't overhit it. Like yeah. I said, as long as you don't overhit it, you can hit a third of the ball, quarter of the ball, you know, the object ball, I mean, and still do the same mm -hmm. thing, right? I didn't think he could put yeah. that much juice on it from where the position of the cue ball. Yeah, that's a that's another shot that is overlooked by the guys that really don't play the game as much. But the guys that play the game, man, that's such an effective shot that Tony had there. Yeah. And it's amazing how the game of one pocket, it seems to me like pool was designed for this game. There's more natural shots than any other pool game I see and how the stack is always facing correctly to shoot that shot, the Tony shot, you know. He's with a kick here. Yeah, I think he can't go wrong. Really, if he sh if he hits any bottom part of the seven. I think oh. he's got to hit the brown ball, though. Yeah, any bottom part of the seven. He's just squeezing him because he's on a foul. Look how good he did with the cue ball there. Wow. I'll tell you, you don't. All right, so now the rule we're playing, which I'm not uh, totally upset about it at all. I'm not a big big guy for changing the watch rules. Watch out, watch out, yeah, watch out. Might not get there. Not a big guy for changing the rules, but the rule they're playing here is if, say, we both owe one, well, those are taken away. And say, let's say I owe one, Billy owes two. And Billy only owes one. Well, then one. Billy would only owe one. Trying to speed up the game a little bit. Now, the 12 looks dead to me. Uh, if he can get at it here in a moment. 14 12 it is. It's just right there to the left of the two ball. Just from the overhead. 
the overhead right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You see that? I'm not yeah. seeing that as well as you, because you're taller than yeah, me. Yeah, it looks like it's it, it's makeable to me. He might be going into the stack, though. Wow. Hmm. Now he's got a three-ball bank, though. He may have a kiss shot on the two off the 12. Looks very playable. Yeah, I like, I like banking the three. And they lock him up there, you know. You, you got what you could get. You know, now you know, start building another position. 14-12 might be shootable, too. No. The uh, two is shootable off the 12. It looks like a hanger to me. Uh, he's going to take a look at the three now, I think. Well, the three is the safe shot. You can, you can be aggressive going into the balls. You can push them a little bit over. Nice hit. Look at this. He's got the two now. Yeah. Huh. And he's got the 14 first if he wants. I would shoot the 14. Yeah. I don't think he had the uh, had any potential with the kiss shot. For I a future. That, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was that was just it, you know. Yeah, but I guess the five goes because he's not shooting the 14. That's I mean, that's the only reason I would think you would not shoot the 14 is if the five ball goes. So you can get a couple extras without really having to work the rack. Fourteen might not even go. Oh yeah, it goes. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't he shoot it there? Well, he passed for some reason on the <laughs> first shot as well, but it definitely it definitely plays. Okay, yeah. yeah. Not gonna argue with you. Yeah, it's a good third of a ball off of that one, so now he's going to play the bank on the 14. Close enough to it, he can beat any kiss, really. Now checking the score. All the balls are laying really nicely for uh, Roberto. A little, little mishap here. Can he check here. the cue ball onto the nine here, uh, Billy? To where he doesn't have any mistakes? Well, wow, he's just going to try and get on out. He really wants to be careful. I think that nine ball that Roberto cut in earlier is still on Tony's <laughs> mind a little bit. <laughs> I think he's just got to take a chance here, shooting the 13 into the rail, moving the seven, all that dropping down. Yeah, he's just got to. That's nice. It came across oh, nice. the 13. Very nice. It's got that nice insurance ball over there. So up against it here. And Tony needs one ball to win the match and the tournament. I thought that Gomez would get maybe one game at most. That's what I thought. You know, yeah, you in the, told game, me that, in the game that he got. From nowhere. He <laughs> got it. He you earned I mean? it. <laughs> <laughs> he earned it, that's for sure. We may be missing a few of the Euros for this event, and some of them that maybe Alvin Ocean, I haven't heard that name if he's here or not, but be one great event on the, on the nine ball side. I don't mind him shooting at this. Got to fire it and stun across, but I really don't mind it overall. Oh, bank combo. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now the four got in the way of the nine. Yeah, Look at sure this. it did. It sure did. But, <laughs> sure, no, like he played the bank combination. Well, oh, I got yeah. a bad rig I got. The same four ball. The same four ball that saved him a moment ago. Kind of got in the way here. He's going to shoot the combo, though. No yeah, doubt yeah. about it. Well, he's got to go. We need well, he ball. played a kiss combo with the bridge earlier <laughs> in, in the match. In this game, I believe it was. Tony knows, though, that he makes this combo right here. It could easily be to where Tony needs one and he needs two here after this inning's over. Maybe even they both need one. Yeah, maybe he can run out, too. Yeah, possibly. You know, so sure. that if you're going to take him all the way up to one or two, might as well just take him out. Yeah, there's that possibility. Okay. He wants to shoot it a little bit, though, here, free the cue ball up. But, yeah. Mm. Tony can kick the nine and slide behind the four, but is the eight very bankable? It is, so I don't think that's the shot. 
Man, he's in a little tough spot here. Trying to really see The camera should go down a little bit. Can't see. You can see. I can't. Well, I'm just kind of using the monitor, but I think he's in trouble here. Can he carry the one into the four somehow and swing the rock? I mean, uh, trying to see what else he may do. Just stick him on the one, moving balls. All right. I don't think he gave up the 15. I don't think the four ball bank goes. But you will see Roberto play it across. He can maybe get it below the nine, bring the cue ball back up towards the bottom of the 13-ish, something like that. Or does he just hold him behind? I him? think he just got to go ahead and go two cushions into the nine with the four. And try and, and make and one. And hopes to make the four. Stun the ball by the right 13. Right there, right there. Oh, he didn't put much speed. Uh, uh, he should have taken a chance at making the ball uh, there. I think so. I think so. Yeah, these guys, especially the cue ball is very open. Where now, Tony can me, cue the ball go, well. Do you go four rails around mm -hmm. now? I mean, you could do that now. I don't want to come off the one hole. I know you don't. Oh, you mean banking the one? No, or what I'm you talking about this. Playing safe? He, he, he don't have to scratch. You know I'm talking about? I, think he, I think he's got a good shot to go four rails and, and, and get away with it. What do you mean, playing safe? You mean? Yeah. I think he just moves his four a little bit like that. Okay. Yeah. That's better, much better. Yeah, I think game's over now. I think this set's over after that shot, and this nine ball bank, unless it banks in. I don't think uh, Roberto's or anybody in the world really is going to be able to fool Tony from this situation and, <laughs> and be able yeah. to win the game. Now, don't get me wrong. They're in play. They're certainly in play. I yeah. mean, if he wanted to bank the 10 and go three rails between around between the pink and the 13 for, uh -huh. you know, trying to make this ball, I don't blame him there either. I don't either because he can make the 10 a couple of different ways. He can kiss it off the nine. Yeah. And you he's know? got a couple different ways to get safe going three rails. Right. If he goes into the four, he could piece hit off the four and get safe. So Billy's saying a big pocket. Oh, he hit it sweet. How about it just hitting it perfect? That's what I was talking about. Rub the four just right. I don't know if he got a, does he have a shot? Uh no. Not much of well, maybe. It's close. Does he have a pocket with the eight? No. Eight definitely doesn't have a pocket. He almost could cut the four. Almost. You know, he's striking the balls really nicely, isn't he? Well, I'll tell you, like both these guys, like I said, Roberto's coming off some really nice rotation events. Of course, his one pocket's getting better all the time, but last couple months, he's uh, been in a lot of finals. Not sure what he's looking at. A three-ball combo? He's gonna, oh, he can draw the ball shooting the eight. I see. So he's drawing behind the four on the three ball combo on the eight fifteen nine. Oh, he could make the eight. Never mind. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was he had a shot to make the eight. I, I didn't think he had a full pocket, but I thought he had a shot to make it. Well, he's just got to play nine ball from here and cut the four and go up to the top rail and have the nine. But I turned out my phone. Don't go into the 13. Just go straight up the center of the table. There you go. Interesting, huh? Well, two shots, whether he comes back to win this this game in this match, but we'll certainly remember the nine ball he cut in and then the ten ball he banked in. Yeah. Interesting, interesting uh, development here. Playing awfully well. He's going to get just where he needs to bank awfully the 13, well. it looks like to me. Oh, no. I thought he could get up on the bank. <laughs> I guess he could I did, too. I thought he had a little bit of an angle to just force it up. I mean, you really can't do much here, can you? 
Oh. I mean, you can't one rail it or three rail it without any risk of losing. He's gonna th one. I would one rail it before a three rail it myself, but. Wow, what a shot. What a shot. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh well, that's my. why one oh pocket's my. the oh best. Oh, my. Are you kidding me? That's why one pocket is the best, Billy. Oh, God. That, that was really another display of pure brilliancy. Yeah. Was brilliance. It was brilliant. It was brilliant again. Yeah, I mean, how was, long can he, how many times can he do that? Well, the good thing for him, he only has to do it one more. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the sad well, thing for us spectators. Uh, we only get to see one more. So now Tony Shohan, both players getting a good luck from Ed Ladawa. Mm. Had a mainstay here in Norfolk for this event. I mean, Tony's played great. And I'll I tell mean, you, great. Yeah, and I tell you, both breaks for Roberto haven't been uh, good at all, meaning not he hadn't hit him bad, but no results. And Tony's taken full advantage, but then Roberto has rebounded both times. Here's that same shot. The seven banks kind of natural speed to go three rails behind the one, it looks yes, like it to does. me. Yes, it does. It's funny, you, you get on tables to where you get the same scenario a lot after the break for some reason. It doesn't have to necessarily be I this know, one, yeah. but it seems like a similar scenario. Yeah. You know, and that's happened on Tony's side. Now, Roberto's been breaking to the other side, and they haven't broke very well at all. And that's been both times. So, I like the seven a lot. It looks like you can play the seven just to the pocket, it looks like to me. A lot of times you play that shot back into balls, but... This time it looks like the seven just banks cleanly at the pocket or maybe even at that ball on the low rail. What is maybe that, he's four? afraid it's going to go too long. Yeah. You know? It looks good to me, though. I tell you, I like it when I can cut it a little you bit. You know, because the cue ball is underneath the seven. Yeah, which... but you get to cut it pretty good, though. But, I, I, you know, I always kind of feel like I can manipulate that shot okay. a little bit when I need to. Okay. Now he's elevated. So he's not playing anything. Oh, look at this shot. Oh, my. Wow. Oh, my. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. I'd like to see that one again, I'll tell you what that. I don't even know what all went ha happened I there. I don't know but. either. Tony's feeling it right now. I looked at his face, and he really, really wasn't happy at all. No. He would love to have a four-rail kick behind the, <laughs> yeah. the, behind the pink four right now. I know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think he has it. The, no, he, well, the, it's close. The 13 precludes uh, that yeah. shot. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, what no. is that? Oh, no. What is that? Tony got a little ahead of himself there, and he was trying to track it three rails behind them balls. And well, sometimes. As accurately as he's been in this match, uh, Roberto, that is. I'm thinking he's going to run out. If he ran out from those other two uh, Well, I, If he positions. buries the first shot, I agree. The first shot to me looks like, uh, of course, one he shouldn't miss, but is oh. he looking at the 7 instead oh, of no. the 13? Oh, no, no, no he, he can't do that. shoot the 13 if you're going to go. He can't do that. Yeah, he's just got to hold the ball for the 12. Anything other than straight in on the 12 is okay. That's what I was saying, the first he jumped, shot. He jumped right up. Yeah, and... I don't know if it's a gut thing that you get, oh, you know, being a commentator right kind of thing, but I'm sure you get it sometimes, Billy, that well, you're you know just what? not when, convinced when, when of he, the first when shot. When he looked so. at the seven. Yeah, that maybe threw him off. No, in other words, he was looking, he was scared of that uh, shot. Of the 13. He was scared yeah. of that shot. No, I get you, yeah. Well, now, Tony, just like. Oh, my. You no? Know? I thought he was trying to come back. Well, just like uh, Roberto, he should run out here. Comes one rail into the eight yeah, mildly. Yeah. Oh, he spun it. He did. He, he why did oh, he put it outside? Oh, I, I thought he know. would put straight know. high. I don't know, but he's on, he's awkward on the six. Well, he's got the fifteen to come one rail into the eight now, but still, he should have just hit a high ball there, no outside. So. Oh, this but this is missable though. Nah, not really. No. Nah. 
No, nah, I mean, he can come into the 10. He don't even have to go into the 8. Uh-oh. Wow. And he missed it. Wow. So it's like fantastic, perfect pool for both players the first four games. And here at the Hill Hill, we've seen a few misses. Oh, well, Tony's miss was nearly, not really that excusable. Well, yeah, I was going to say if the two and six go, you get on those now. and Oh, Ro yeah. Roberto oh, can yeah. kind of do what he does best. Run balls. Just a soft draw on the two here. Like that. Wants to get rid of the three, of course. May be able to get up on the seven right now, huh? Well, I guess oh, not. don't get jacked up. They only got. He's got three. Two. Three. Does he, does he owe one or? No. This is pretty much the shot to maybe end him in the match right here uh, if he makes this one. Yeah. That's four. You can see five and six, and then it's a matter of getting up on those two stripes. Yeah, I don't know about this. Yeah, he can go one rail uh, on the two rails behind the twelve, right? I think it's natural. He's going backwards with the cue ball. One rail. That's a choice. May not get the angle to get on the 12, yeah, though. That's what I'm saying. I kind of like that better than going to the inside. Yeah, well, you figure if you underhit the inside, you could be in trouble with a guy having a ball hanging, right? So, But he doesn't really get out this way, does he? Oh, he does. Wow. Roberto Gomez, one long 12 ball away from taking this title down and... Tony's going to have a little bit to think about in this final, even though it is a short race. So. Wow, we're well, stealing two games from Tony Showan from nowhere, and then, like I said, a couple mistakes from the guys, but both a great wow. tournament. Roberto Gomez, congratulations. Tony Showan, you're playing great. Yeah, it sure, it sure is. It was an excellent match. Uh, Tony missed the shot. None of us thought that he was going to miss. Yeah. And uh, Roberto Gomez just took advantage of it. Right? I mean, uh, Gomez really made some great outs. In that oh, way. he sure did. The 10 ball won't go on three rails. Yeah. The 9 ball was probably the shot of the match. How about the shot after the break here in this game? One heck of a shot. Yeah. So his, his one he pocket's coming along. all the furniture on the other side. Yeah, like, and stun yeah. the cue ball the rail. But yeah, yeah, put the cue Anyways, ball the ladies rail. and gentlemen, stay tuned from Norfolk. Nine ball coming up, juniors coming up, and the big foot all week. Thank you, and good night.